time millions, one o'clock p.m. Let's go to NYB Outreach Ministries, sponsored by Renata Connie Hedgepet. In her absence, we have with us again um, in the studio, Pastor Reno Ackley. She's going to bring the word on today. We're going to let him come in his own way. Good afternoon again to you, Pastor. Hey, man. Good afternoon, Sister C. I just want to say good afternoon to everyone that's listening in on 1480 AM and 106.9 FM. To God be the glory for all things. If you're alive today, that's enough to say, Lord, thank you. If you're breathing right now, that's enough to say, Lord, thank you. If you're in the right mind, that's enough to say, Lord, thank you. We do honor the Lord Amen. Because he is good and his mercy endures forever. For this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, come on, somebody. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. When we enter into his gates with thanksgiving, when a lips of praise come in our lips, amen, I can imagine the, the smile on God's heart when we wake up and say, Lord, thank you. When we just give him some reverence, amen, because he's good and merciful. Amen. This is the, that's the God we serve. Amen. God wants our attention. He wants our praise. He wants our thank you. He wants us to bless him. Amen. So we're just blessing the Lord on today. And we thank God for Minister Connie Hespeth and the NYB Outreach uh, Ministry family for once again allowing us to share a message to God's people. Amen. But we do continue to pray for those that are uh, sick and shut in, those that are bereaving right now. Uh, we buried my cousin. Gloria Satterwhite, Gloria Williams Satterwhite, amen, on yesterday, and I didn't get a chance to talk to all my cousins, some that was down for Virginia, New Jersey, uh, so I did. I was able to speak to uh, Jeffrey Austin. I haven't seen him since high school. <laughs> hey man, he's been gone a long time, and it's just good to see him under the circumstances. It's good to see cousins and families there. A lot of different families was represented on on yesterday. Uh, the Collins, uh, um, and uh, of course the Shadowy, the Williams, and the Wardricks, and many others was there. Uh, and she was there laid so beautifully. I tell you, she was a beautiful cousin. And, and you never would have known she had a problem or dealing with an issue if somebody didn't tell you. She's always had a special glow about herself. And she always had that beautiful smile on her face. I could just see it now. When I first start driving, I used to go over there regularly. We used to cook out over there at her and her husband's house. And those old days, I tell you, you remember those old days. Uh, a lot of times we get married, we move, we move here and there, and we don't connect. But I want to encourage you to connect with your families because, you know, tomorrow's not promised. You know, tomorrow is not promised. And then even uh, when I got home and turned to uh, social media, found that another uh, dear friend, another classmate, and another family had gone with the Lord, uh, Ouija Edwards, and uh, down in the woods in Cinevere area. Uh, remember those from back in the day. But we praying for her husband, husband Deshaun, and we just want to pray for everybody that's going through with the loss of loved ones, those that are sick, those that are shut in, those that are dealing with any kind of problems. Let us go to God in prayer. And before we do, I'm going to be coming from the book of Hebrews uh, on this afternoon, the 13th chapter. And I'm going to be starting verse 1. But let us go to God in prayer. Father, once again, we come as humble as we know how. First, thanking you and praising you and honoring you on today, O oh God, because you allowed us to see it. Father, we want to thank you, O oh God, for just keeping us all last week while we traveled, while we was up and down the roads. And Father, we thank you, O oh God, for your hand of protection. We thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, for your finger of love that woke us all up this morning, O oh God, to a brand new day. Father, we're thanking you, O oh God, hallelujah, for being in the right mind. We're thanking you, O oh Father, for the activities of our limbs. Father, we're asking you, O oh God, if you would continue to touch your people, O oh God, wherever they are. Whether they're sick, whether they're shut in, or whether they're dealing with a bereavement, loss of loved one. Father, we know that you are a comforter when we need comforting. We know, oh Father, oh God, that when we need strength, oh God, you are our strength. 
Father, we are, uh, know that you are everything that we need in this present world. And Father, we know that we can't even breathe without you, oh Father. We can't even operate our hands and feet without you touching our mind, oh God. And I'm thanking you on today for touching our mind. And I'm thanking you, oh God, for comforting us, oh God. I'm thanking you, oh Father, for those families that continue to come together, oh God, and put you first, oh God. Put you in the middle of every family, God. I'm thanking you on today for it. Father, I'm thanking you, oh God, hallelujah, oh God, that we're able to have clothes on our back today. Father, I'm thanking you, oh Father, for thy word that's going to come forth, oh God, that will bless the brokenhearted, oh God, and lift them up in the name of Jesus. Father, I'm thanking you for the word because your word corrects us when we're wrong. I'm thanking you, oh Father, that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. I'm thanking you on today for your mercy. But God, we're thanking you for your son's sacrifice. We thank you for the blood of Christ. For there's power in the blood. There's something about that blood that, that changes us on the inside and we glorify your name for it today. Father, we're thanking you for this radio station, oh God, that continue to play and, and, and sound off the alarm to your people, oh God, that whenever you're weak, oh God, we're praying that they will be lifted up, oh God. We're praying on today for every spirit that is brokenhearted, but praying for every spirit that's confused right now. Oh God, that you are the ultimate one that we need to lean to. Oh God, we're thanking you on today that we lean not to our own understanding, but God, we trust in you into all the days of our life. Father, we're praying for those that are, are sitting in, and laying in the rest homes, oh God. Oh God, we're asking you to touch them where they are, oh God. Touch their spirit man, that their spirit man still is able to preach to you, preach to you a good song, oh God. Hallelujah, because we all are preaching a song today, oh God. And that is that you are a King of King and a Lord of Lord. We are thanking you on today that we have a song that we can preach, oh God. Even though we might not can get the words out, oh God, we, if we can just hum a word to you, oh God. We're thanking you, oh God, for hearing it. We're thanking you for your son interceding, oh God, when we don't know what to say and we don't know how to say it, God. We're thanking you, oh God, that he makes every word correct, oh God. We're loving you on today, oh God, for the peace that you give us in our neighborhoods, the peace that we have in our homes, oh God where we don't have fussing and fighting and arguing, oh God, where we don't have the sheriff come up to our doorstep, oh God, where we don't have the police coming up, oh God. We're thanking you, oh God, for the peace that the husband and the wife gives each other, oh God. We're thanking you, oh Heavenly Father, oh God, for the things that you're going to continue to do in our life. Father, we're asking you to touch this county of Franklin County, oh God. Father, we're asking you to touch this nation, oh God, for this nation continue to go away from your teaching and go away from your word. Oh, God, we're asking you, oh, God, if they be found, oh, God, if thy will be done, that there will be a turning around, oh, God, that there will be a a, a, a release of chains that, that are wrapping around your people and keeping them stagnant, oh, God. Father, we're praying for all the ministries, oh, God, that continue to teach and preach your word, oh, God, that we continue to do so and not deviate, that we will continue to stand boldly, oh, God, before your throne, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we are thanking you now, God, for the word that's going to come forth on today day, oh God, let it speak to our spirit where we are error. Let it speak that we may have correction in our life, oh God, that we will treat one another with love, that we will honor each other, oh God, that we will edify each other, oh God, that if we are sold out to Christ, oh God, that we will connect with one another, oh God, to fight in your army. Oh God, I'm thanking you, oh God, that we can stand even at the midst of war against the enemy, oh God. We're thanking you, oh Father, for you said greater works ye shall do. Oh God, we're thanking you for giving us the power to, to tread over scorpions, oh God. We're thanking you, oh God, that we have power over the enemy, oh God, that we can say, get thee behind me, Satan. Oh God, we are thanking you on today, oh God, for giving us all that we need, oh God, while we are journeying here on earth. Now, Father, we ask you to bless every leader, oh God, those that continue to push even through their ailments, oh God. We're asking you to bless those senior preachers, oh God, those senior pastors, oh God, that, that might have disabilities or ailments, oh God, but thanking you, oh God, that their spirits still have fire. Oh God, we're thanking you for that fire of the Holy Ghost, oh God, that only you can give. Oh 
oh God, we'll thank you, oh God, that that Holy Ghost, oh God, purge us, oh God, and clean us on the inside. Oh Father, I'm loving you on today, oh God, because you first loved me. And uh, Lord, oh God, I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, the one that bled and died for all that will believe. We're thanking you, oh Father, that in this season, that those that going to believe, those that want more are going to come into the house and learn. Come into the house and work in the name of Jesus, oh God. We're thanking you, oh God, that we have a mind to, for kingdom building. We're thanking you, oh Heavenly Father, for all things. Now, Father, if there's anything that I omitted on today, oh God, Father, you just touch it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, forgive me of my sins. Forgive us all for the things that we come short of. But God, we're asking you, O oh God, to continue to create in us a clean heart. Renew our mind to a right spirit. Oh God, hallelujah. We're thanking you, O oh God. And this is my prayer to you. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Amen. You're sitting there on your couch. Just wave your hand. If you're laying in the bed, listen to this radio. Just put your hands up to the heavens. Amen. And say, Lord, thank you. Amen. It could have been another way. But since you're still here, you might not be able to walk, but your spirit still running. Still running for Jesus. And that's what you ought to get joy about right there. Amen. That even if I can't move as fast as I used to move, I'm thanking the Lord that I'm able to move as quick quick as I am at my age. Oh, that's enough to shout glory right there. Amen. We're coming from the book of Hebrews, the 13th chapter, and I want to talk with you for a little bit on the subject of is the love of Christ in us? And that's a question we ought to ask ourselves when look in the mirror. Let me look in the mirror, you know. Is the love of Christ in us? That's the message today. Are we truly loving our brothers and sisters as Christ have loved us? You can jot that question down. Are, are you really loving your neighbor as thyself? Are you really loving people? Hallelujah. Beyond. Are you loving people? Amen. Like Christ loved us? That's the question. Are we really truly loving people? Or do we only love our four no more? Do we only love the ones that we grew up with? Do we only love the ones that come to the family reunion? Or, or do we love the one that might speak another language? Do we love another others that might look different than we do? Do we really have the love of Christ? And that's what we should be asking. Are we truly loving our brothers and sisters as Christ has loved us? It doesn't matter what nationality you are, nor the color of your skin. Are we showing the love of God towards one another? These are questions that we should be asking ourselves, regardless of what church you go to. Do I love my neighbor as myself? And the neighbor is not just talking about the one that's next door to you, the one that you can walk to the next door uh, uh, over the grass to. No, it's talking about the one that live in the bottom, the one that stay on the hill, the one that might live in Franklinton, the one that might live in Durham, the one that might live in Chapel Hill, the one that might be in Israel. Come on, somebody. The one that might be in Africa. Those are your neighbors too. Do I love my neighbors and myself or do I hate people? Come on, we ought to be getting real with ourselves. Do, do we go to church just because it's Sunday or do we want to get more of God? Do we want to understand what God desires of us or do we just want to go because it's Sunday or out of tradition? But we ought to be loving people, not because of the color of their skin, but because they are God creation and because I love myself I'm going to love somebody else come on somebody I know we might not have no amens today but if you're in your couch, you ought to say amen. You might be driving down the road. You ought to shout glory. Amen. Because God don't look at our skin. My God, so many people are so confused today to think that this skin color is something so great. But God don't look at that because guess what? Every sand in the sea might have a different shade. Oh, my God. Mm. But the one thing that God cares about is our soul. He care about your spirit. And whether we got the spirit of Christ, and if we don't have the spirit of Christ, he must have a spirit of something else. And, oh, but I choose to have the spirit of Christ on this afternoon. To love people, amen, beyond, hallelujah, my ability to love. That means, in other words, that even when people come against me, even when people give me that stare, I got to love them beyond their facial expression. I got to love them as Christ loved us. Come Come on, if any man or woman living on this earth say that they love God but hate you because of what you look like, I'm here to let you know they are simply a liar. 
Oh, they don't like to be called a liar, but they are lying. Even if they are not telling a, a, a lies we for say, but if you are sitting around hating people because of what they look like, because of what they got and don't have, because they don't, they might have not went to college or whatever you decide in your mind why you don't like them. Amen. Then you have to check yourself in your own mirror. Go into the bathroom and turn the light on and look at you. Do I love beyond my, my measure of my feeling? Amen. Because some people get caught up in their feeling. I'm going to hate you because of the news. I'm going to hate you because of what I heard. Instead of going on the spirit of Christ and loving people in spite of what you see, but the way you feel in your spirit. Come on. Amen. A lot of times, you know, we, we know that we, you know, it's, we can't judge a book by its cover all the time. Even though there's sometimes we can judge a book by its cover. Amen. We can call a spade a spade when it's talking like, like, like talking crazy and looking crazy and acting crazy and doing all types of evil things. Yeah, we can identify that the cover of the book is true, but every book, you can't believe every book and, and count every book by its cover. Every yeah, once in a while, you got to read the pages. Come on, somebody. Because nowadays, they got a big headline. Nowadays, they got a catchy, a, a catchy slogan. But guess what? When you begin to read, it's far off from that which they gave you the advertisement for. Oh, but let me continue. So the first thing that, that Hebrews starts off with in verse 1 is, let brotherly love continue. You see, let brotherly love continue. It's something about continuing to love. And, and brotherly love is not just talking about your siblings. It's talking about those that are not related to you. Because in essence, we all are related if we really look at it. If we really look at it, we ain't got but one mother. And that mother is Eve. For the Bible says she is the mother of all creation. Come on, somebody. Amen. And since she's the mother of all creation, every color under the rainbow comes out of that same womb at the beginning. Oh my God. So we are thankful today. Yes, you are my brother, even if you speak another tongue, even if you speak a, a language that I can't even understand, you still my brother, my sister. Amen. And this is what we're saying today. Let brotherly love what continue. Amen. We have to let love endure. We have to allow love to go beyond our own household and flow to other nations. Amen. A people as as well. Glory to God. For Hebrew uh, Proverbs say for Proverbs say in, in, in chapter 10 and, and verse 12, hatred stir up strife. Hatred. You know, some people are so hateful. You know, we're talking about love today, but some people are just so hateful. You can't be around them because they always call us in commotion. They always got something that they're they are trying to destroy. They always trying to bring up division. The Bible says in Proverbs 10 and 12, hatred stirs up strife. But then it said, love covers all sin. This is the Bible speaking to us today. Love covers all sin. Because if you have enough love, then we won't have war in our streets. If you have love, you won't take your brother's life over a dollar. If you have love, come on somebody, you won't try to, to take somebody down. You don't rejoice when somebody are going through. But your love have past compassion and your love have pity on those that are poor. Hallelujah. That you want to help them come up out of that ground. Come on somebody. Somebody, amen. So let's go on back to Hebrews 13 and 2. Be not forgetful. Amen. Do not be forgetful to, to entertain strangers. In other words, don't forget to be kind and, and compassionate to people that you don't know. Amen. Because the Bible says, for thereby some have been entertained uh, angels on the, on the unawares. Amen. Some have been uh, entertained Angels unaware. In other words, we might be amongst angels and not even knowing that we are doing so. You know, we ride by and we don't even see if we can help or sometime. You know, sometimes we, we look in and we keep on going when the Spirit done told you to stop. The Spirit done told you to, to roll down the window and, and bless somebody today. But you, you neglect and ignore the Spirit that was speaking to your heart. Amen. And you rolled on why? And that's why the Spirit then whipped you all the way home. And you said, Lord, I, I know I should have rolled down my window. I should have did this. I should have did that. But you looking at the outside and instead of looking at the spirit of the need of the person. Come on, somebody. We have overlooked 
the outward experience of strangers that we cross paths with every day and they could be angels unawares. Then God says in verse 4 of Hebrews, marriage. This is what we want to talk about. We're talking about love today. Do we have the love of Christ? Do we have love enough to follow his will? Do we have enough love to, to follow his direction? Do we have love enough to follow the commandments? Do we have love enough to trust God knows better for our life than we do? Uh, so God is showing us in Hebrews about the, the, the love factor, amen, of our spirit. Because if we love God, if we trust God enough, amen, then the commandments will become none a, 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 a hard thing to do. Amen. Some people say, well, we don't have to follow the commandments today. Some people say, well, we don't have to do that today because we we, we, are, we, we don't do that no more. But, but if we are, are following love, if we are following God, if we have enough love on the inside of our spirit to, to, to love God, then we're going to not kill and we're going to not steal or we're not going to cover thy neighbor's house uh, or thy neighbor's wife. Uh, or we ain't going to do things to tear folks down. If we have love and, and that love is connected to the Holy Spirit of God, amen, we don't want to kill nobody. We ain't going to murder nobody because if you hate your brother, even if you don't pull a trigger, you done killed them in your spirit. Come on. Amen. But God said says here, let's talk about the marriage for a little bit real quickly. Amen. Hebrews 13 and, and at verse 4. Marriage is what? Honorable in all and the what? Bed undefiled. Meaning what we do as husband and wife in the bedroom is pure. But whoremongers and adulterers, God would judge. Marriage is honorable. If we are to really enjoy love behind the bedroom door, we have to be married. Marriage is an honorable thing in every aspect of a husband and a wife relationship. And today we see that when we turn, turn to social media, you can go on social media and you can see women going through an emotional roller coaster with the guys they've been dealing with. And, and, and the guys that they've been dealing with, the only thing they come to do is to play house. Then to go and come as they please. And so many of our brothers today are acting like a loose dog. Strolling the neighborhood looking for a female in heat. But I want to let you know that God says that marriage is honorable. If we want to have an honorable lifestyle, we got to get married. We got to come together and make a commitment. It's too many of our brothers mistreating women out here. And then I'm going to flip it over. It's so many women out here that say, I'm going to use my moneymaker. I'm going to shake what my mama gave me. And I'm going to get him uh, and he's going to buy me this and buy me that. And I don't want to get married. I, I just want a, a Wilbur. I just want a, a Johnny. I just want to call Tyrone, and, but I don't want to marry Tyrone. Uh, God is not honoring that. And this is why we see that so many young people continue to struggle and have all of these setbacks and have all of these uh, things that come up in their life. It seems that they can't get ahead. It seems like they're always going through it because uh, they, they've started off in a wrong way. Amen. But we want to understand, brothers, you can't keep going around town acting like uh, uh, a dog in heat. Come on, somebody. They go into the next house down the block and this house down the street. God said the marriage is honorable. And, and when you are married, anything can go down between the husband and wife. But let's continue the word because I want to get you to understand that the Bible helps us to, to grow more in God. The Bible shows us when we are wrong. The, the Bible teaches us the things that we should be doing better. Amen. Now, our old people used to say, yes, yeah, you're going to fall down. You, you might even make some mistakes. But guess what? Don't keep falling down in the same old mud puddle. Amen. It says here uh, that we're going to let your conversations be without covetousness. In other words, let your desires be your own and not the desires of others. Or let your heart speak and nobody else is speaking. This is where we got to get to in our walk with God. And be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave you 
nor forsake you. You might be out here really struggling hard, but, but don't let nobody convince you to go out here and rob and steal just to get ahead. Because when you rob and steal, God don't bless that. In other words, you are cursed with a curse because you are taken from somebody else. Amen. Where you could have gotten it yourself. You could have waited on God, but, but you didn't want to wait on God. You didn't want to go down on your knees. You didn't want to build up your faith, but you wanted to get it right then. And somebody came up with a crazy idea on how to swindle somebody else out of their hard earned money. And this is why people don't can't get ahead because they're swelling them folk. Amen. And there is no love in that. And there's no love in their heart. A person that go around here and continue to create businesses that steal the community blind and suck all of the, the, the poor money is no love in that. Amen. Everybody thinking love going to those sweet things. Boy, they go up there and they'll stay all night long. And then when you tell somebody to come to church, well, they sit in there for 35 minutes. They done sit in there too long. We got to begin to have love about what God has shown us and why we are here. Everybody have a purpose in this earth. A lot of times we don't even know our purpose. Sometimes we don't even know which, we, which way we're supposed to turn. Sometimes we don't even know what, what is our mission. Amen. But if we get in God, hallelujah, come on, somebody, really get in God. We love him. And then he will speak to you and tell you your purpose. There's many things that we have to do on this earth. Amen. There are some worshipers. There are some prayer warriors. Amen. There are some, there are some, uh, 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 some ushers on the floor. There are some singers in the choir stand. Everybody has gifts. Amen. What gifts are you using today? Are you using your gift for, for, for love? Are you get, using your gift to get what you want? And this is what we got to ask the question. Amen. What are we doing with the love that's on the inside of us? So that we, uh, verse number six, so that we may boldly say the Lord is our helper. When you're going through, when you don't have, you got to seek the Lord God and wait on him. Don't wait. Don't wait to, to try to, to come up with a scheme or a scam. No, you got to wait on the Lord and let him be your helper. And he said, I, I will not fear this is God talking. The Lord said to us that he's going to be our helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. When the trouble, when trouble come and we're in trouble, amen, as God's children, his love is so great that he, he comes to deliver us. He comes to set us free. He comes to give us the victory over every enemy. This is God that when he sees his sheep in trouble, he comes to see about the sheep that's crying out to him. You know, the children of Israel was in bondage for so many years and they began to cry out. And do you not know those cries went to heaven and God can make a plan for them? To get out of bondage. And if you want to get out of debt. You want to get out of poverty. Amen. You got to understand and be satisfied with what God gives you. And then you got to trust him. You got to trust him. Amen. You don't trust God. How can you get out of your, how can you get out of your downfall? If you don't have faith enough to believe that he could get you out. You know. And all of us ain't, may not be rich. But guess what? We are rich if you look at it. Because see, word, the world has said to be rich, you have to have a lot of money. The world has said that you have to be rich if, you know, because you drive a, a certain type of car. The world said you are rich because you have to have so many different degrees and you got it going on. You the CEO. Now, the richness of, of God is, is, is unlimited things. Amen. It's good health. It's a generation of children that continue to have generation of children to be blessed by the Lord God that, that regardless of, of my education Educational background, he had, had he has enough uh, uh, in me, Amen. That I can walk through that door and get whatever I need. That's the faith that I have in God, and God is no respect of person. And I love him because he first loved me. I love him because yes, I might have not finished college, but he continued to open doors for me, Amen. You might have not finished high school, but look at what how God bless you, Amen. Some people quit uh, high school, dropped out, had a change in their life. God done touched them. Now they the CEO of their own business. Come on, somebody, it can happen you know there was a man i'm getting ready to go uh there was a man uh uh, uh named mr dudley down in uh greensboro down in the greensboro gifford county uh, uh D dudley's cosmetology and he had a fourth grade education and this man was a multi-millionaire and don't you tell me that god can't do it i don't care about the phd amen i serve a god that allowed the phd come on somebody and that same god that allowed that brother or that sister to get that doctoral degree is the same god that can give you anything How 
hallelujah, you desire, if you trust in him, if you believe in him, if you would turn away from your wicked ways, you will seek him first. Glory to God. He going to add everything unto you because he loves us enough. He sent his son Jesus to die for a world that bring us back to himself. But glory be to God, the tomb couldn't hold him. Glory to God, the grave couldn't keep him. Oh my God, he took back the keys and said, Satan, you have no more rule over this uh, over this world. I'm taking it back for my people. And this is enough to shout glory that when you have a turnaround, when you accept Christ, amen, as your personal savior, he is the different maker in your life. Hallelujah. He opened up your eyes and old things become of the past. But behold, the new things all become new in your life. Amen. New understanding, new blessings, new carriage. Amen. New power. Amen. Because every time we look now, the more we travel, the more God gives us power. Because when we get to a new level, there's a new devil. And those devils out there don't want to see you grow. They don't want to see you excel. They don't want to see you be the beauty of the Lord. But they want to come and conquer you. They want to try to come and sabotage you. But glory be to God. What God has for you, hallelujah, can no man take away. Whatever door he opened for you, can no man open nor close. But what God has for me is for me. And I thank God right there. We got to have love. If you want a, a bigger blessing, then you better start loving bigger. Amen, somebody. Come on, somebody. That's for somebody today. But we just thank and praise God for the word on today. We hope that something in this message bless you. Amen. Is the love of Christ in us. God bless you.